Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Repeated acts of terror plagued the state of Israel over the weekend, with separate attacks directed towards civilians and IDF soldiers, as well as indiscriminate rocket fire from the Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory. The Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad accuses Israel of assassinating one of its most prominent rocket engineers, Syria's capital Damascus. Progress has been reportedly made on de-escalating the situation in Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley, following an Egyptian brokered summit that included delegations from Israel, the Palestinian Authority, the US and Jordan. Repeated acts of terror plagued the state of Israel over the weekend, with separate attacks directed toward civilians, soldiers and Israeli territory in general. On Friday evening, near the Beitin Junction, situated in the Benjamin Regional Sector, a Palestinian man was identified acting suspiciously while approaching IDF soldiers. Upon calls to halt his approach and identify, the suspect reportedly drew a knife and began running toward the Israeli troops, who responded with fly fire. As a result, the terrorist was eliminated, while in contrast, no injuries were reported to the IDF forces. Subsequently, overnight on Friday, a number of reports were cited regarding drive-by shootings toward IDF posts, including the Kalandia border crossing, which is the main civilian entry point from the West Bank city of Ramallah toward the Israeli capital Jerusalem. Thankfully, no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops who responded with live fire. Subsequently on Saturday, rocket alert sirens sounded in the Shara Negev and Nachal Oz regional councils in southern Israel, forcing residents to rush into bomb shelters within the IDF home front commands instructed 15 seconds time. Shortly thereafter, the IDF spokesperson's unit confirmed that one rocket was indiscriminately fired from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities. However, thankfully, the projectile exploded in an uninhabited area, failing to cause any injuries or property damage. And while no retaliatory response was made vis-à-vis -vis the Islamist terror organizations in Gaza as of yet, the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, released a statement on Sunday morning in which it blamed Israel for assassinating one of its most senior operatives in the Syrian capital Damascus. According to the statement, which was published by the Islamic Jihad's military wing, namely the Al-Quds Brigades, the assassinated operative, who was referred to as an engineer, was shot dead by agents of Israel in a suburb of Damascus. It is worth noting that according to the Lebanese Al-Mayadin network, which is affiliated with the Iranian proxy Hezbollah, the assassinated operative of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad was one of the organization's most prominent engineers responsible for development of rockets which are utilized against Israel. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu highlighted in his opening remarks at the weekly cabinet meeting that whoever tries to harm Israeli citizens will pay the ultimate price. <laughs> כדי לבוא חשבון עם המחבלים ולסכל תשתיות טרור. עשרות מחבלים חודשו בחודש, סוכלו בחודש האחרון. רבים אחרים נעצרו. אני חוזר ואומר, כל אלה שמנסים לפגוע באזרחי ישראל, דמם בראשם. אנחנו מגיעים אל המחבלים ואל ראשיהם בכל מקום. A few hours following Premier Netanyahu's remarks, an abhorrent terrorist opened fire toward a civilian vehicle bearing Israeli license plates in the Palestinian village of Hawara, near the very location where the two Israeli brothers, Yagel and Halel Yaniv, were murdered nearly a couple weeks prior. While the driver, a U.S. Marines Corps veteran, sustained serious injuries, he managed to disembark from the vehicle and return fire toward the terrorist. In tandem, an IDF reconnaissance squad operating in the sector witnessed the attack and engaged the terrorist as well. In the 
זיהיתי מחבל פותח באש לעבר רכב ישראלי. אני והלוחמים שאיתי חתרנו למגע, פתחנו בירי לעבר המחבל. המחבל נפצע, אך הצליח להימלט. המשכנו במרדף אחריו וסגרנו עליו מעגל, יחד עם שאר הלוחמים בפלוגה. Medical teams that arrived at the scene immediately treated the man, a dual Israeli-American national, for injuries to his head and shoulder before evacuating him and his wife, who suffered from shock, to Bailinson Hospital in central Israel. Meanwhile, following a brief manhunt of roughly 25 minutes, trackers from the IDF Samaria Brigade located and apprehended the terrorist in a nearby deserted structure. קיבלנו דיווח על פיגוע ירי במרחב כפר חווארה, קפצתי יחד עם כוחות נוספים של החטיבה לבצע סריקות במרחב. במהלך הסריקות זיהינו תרמילים ואת בריחת המחבל בגלל כתמי דם שמובילות לתוך בית נטוש. הבחנתי בדמות חשודה ועל פי סימני הזיהוי חשדתי כי זה המחבל, בתום נוהל מעצר חשוד עצרנו אותו והוא הועבר להמשך חקירות כוחות הביטחון. It is worth noting that while terror continues to plague Israel and the situation remains volatile throughout the districts of Judea, Samaria, the Jordan Valley and the Gaza Strip among others, an Israeli security delegation participated in a meeting with the delegation of the Palestinian Authority under Egyptian mediation in Egypt's resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh. The meeting, which also included representatives from the United States and Jordan, aimed at de-escalating tensions on the ground ahead of the Muslim month of Ramadan, which is set to start on Wednesday evening. Meanwhile, following the meeting, which concluded shortly after the heinous terror attack in the village of Hawara, sources familiar with details of the talks confirmed to TV7 that the meeting was held in a positive atmosphere and that progress has been achieved without providing additional information. It is worth noting, however, that the Palestinian Authority's participation in efforts to de-escalate tensions on the ground have seemingly infuriated its main Palestinian rivals, including the Islamist Hamas organization in the Gaza Strip. الأمنية واستنكار واستهجان كبيرين لمشاركة السلطة في هذا اللقاء مع الاحتلال الصهيوني هذا اللقاء يشجع الاحتلال على تصعيد عدوانه على شعبنا الفلسطيني واستمرار بارتكاب المجازر يبدو أن السلطة مصرة أن تغرد خارج السرب الوطني وتخالف الإجماع المطلوب حقيقة عقد قمم دولية وإقليمية من أجل دعم صمود أبناء شعبنا الفلسطيني في مواجهة إرهاب الحكومة الفاشية الصهيونية Meanwhile, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a phone conversation with U.S. President Joe Biden and updated him on the terrorist attack that took place in Hawara. According to the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem, Premier Netanyahu told President Biden that Israel would continue to take action everywhere against terrorists and the architects of terrorism. Moreover, according to the statement, the conversation also focused on the Iranian threat as Israel continues to work tirelessly to rally global support in confronting Tehran's nuclear ambitions in particular and regional malign aspirations in general. According to the Israeli premier who spoke about Jerusalem's efforts during his weekly cabinet meeting, he declared that the Jewish state, which the Islamic Republic pledged to annihilate on multiple occasions, will not allow another holocaust. ממשלת ישראל ממשיכה במאבק נגד תוכנית הגרעין של איראן. בשבוע שעבר נפגשתי עם קנצלר גרמניה אולף שולץ. עמדתי יחד עם הקנצלר על הרציף בברלין שממנו נשלחו היהודים אל מחנות המוות. בניגוד לעבר, כשאנחנו עומדים היום מול המשטר הקיצוני בטהרן, שמבקש גם הוא למחוק מיליוני יהודים מעל פני האדמה, אנו עושים כל מה שדרוש כדי להגן על עצמנו. כפי שאני אומר למנהיגי העולם, כפי שאמרתי לקנצלר שולץ, המדינה היהודית לא תאפשר שואה נוספת. Netanyahu went on to highlight the incredible turning point in the history of the Jewish people. התפנית העצומה בגורל עמנו קיבלה ביטוי בולט בביקורי בדיונים שקיימנו על אספקת מערכת החץ שלוש מישראל לגרמניה. בשואה היהודים היו חסרי מגן מול גרמניה הנאצית. שמונים שנה לאחר מכן גרמניה מבקשת להשיג מערכות הגנה מהמדינה היהודית. 
אז לא יכולנו להגן על עצמנו, היום אנחנו עוזרים לאחרים להגן על עצמם. איזה מהפך כביר. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like also to encourage all of you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.